Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we are playing some Old Market Simulator and I want to talk about some tips and tricks that I have kind of picked up on after playing this game for a while. And uh, yeah, let's hop right into it, shall we? So the first thing I want to mention is when you start off this game, uh, the very first day, like without anything else happening immediately, like as soon as you start and enter the game, one of the first things you should buy is a fishing rod. You don't need bait or anything like that. You literally just need the fishing rod and if you buy this fishing rod and you use up the entire thing until it breaks on that first day just fishing you will make a ton of money starting off now it's very tedious obviously it takes a long time uh, you'll have a bunch of fish you'll have a bunch of uh you'll you, you have a chance to get like beer and also whiskey which are what you're going after there's also junk and stuff that you can find that can be valuable um but the beer and the whiskey are really what you're after. The fish is also kind of nice to have, but not super important. But yeah, and honestly, you can, I'm just saying buy one uh, fishing rod and just use it that first day. It, you don't have to limit yourself to just one. You could, you could actually buy like two or three and just fish for as long as that takes and amass so much product and items and stuff that you you won't be you won't have to actually buy anything from the market uh, for a while. Uh, you could probably go like two three days without buying anything from the market because your inventory will be so full of stuff. So speaking of the junk that I was referring to, there are two ways to deal with junk or garbage stuff that you don't really need anymore. So like an empty container that doesn't have any more food on it or junk that you've gotten from the ocean, you can either burn it, which I don't recommend you do, even though when I first started playing this game, that's what I did. Or you can essentially recycle it to make some money off of it. So if you take any junk like so, which is uh, something you fish out from the ocean, or if you take a uh, some kind of container or whatever that you had food on to go here, you can recycle it for money, essentially get some of your money back uh, and also basically get free passive income for fishing for junk and uh, destroying it there. This is also the same way you actually get rid of anything else you don't want. And that, that goes with animals, any type of, uh, like if you have a large bag and you, or a medium bag, you wanna get a large one, you can get rid of your bag that way. And you get basically half of whatever you paid for it by tossing it in here. So this is how you get rid of any items that you just don't want. It's really good. The money's not insane, but it does absolutely help. Another big tip in regards to the fishing too, you're gonna get these trophies, these fish trophies here, and you may be inclined to sell them. And to be honest, like early on, I would probably recommend you, so, well, not really sell them, but what you would do is you would junk them in there and you would get money for them. Uh, but as an alternative, you can place them on your walls. And if you have fish trophies on your wall, it'll up your reputation and more people will frequent your store. So it seems like the reputation is uh, directly uh, affecting how many people come to your store on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, you obviously want more people to come there. Maybe not so early on when you don't have a lot of product, but once you get a little further in the game, obviously the more people in your store to buy your product, the better. Uh, you'll run out of product a lot faster, but if you make sure you stock up, that won't be a problem. So fish statues are good for money, but they are also good to get some early reputation so you can make more money on top of that. So uh, there you go. Another really important tip is uh, unlock the farm as early as possible. Farming is very lucrative in this game, as is for any other game that allows you to do farming. Uh, as opposed to buying product and reselling it um, and making a little bit of profit off of that. Everything you buy here is essentially pure, or everything you grow here is essentially pure profit outside of the cost of how much it costs you to make, uh, to buy the seeds in the first place. So a uh, bag of cabbage, I think you get like 12 seeds. The bag is only a thousand, but you get like, uh, you get a decent amount per each, uh, per each head of lettuce that you sell. So it, it, it works out. Yeah, uh, it definitely makes a lot more sense to grow and sell as opposed to, um, as opposed to buying and selling. The big problem though, the issue comes in, uh, when you look at how long it takes for this stuff to sell or to grow. So, you know, six days, five days, five days, four days. So you want to factor that in. Obviously, certain things are seasonal, so you only can grow things during certain seasons unless you have a greenhouse, which brings me to another tip. You should absolutely get the greenhouse early too, at least one of them. So that way, if there's something in particular that is seasonal, you can grow it whenever you want. 
So as long as you have a greenhouse, you can grow seasonal items all year round, which is very nice, even though the greenhouse is pretty expensive. This next tip is a pretty big one. In this game, they typically give you kind of options uh, to kind of tear up uh, when it comes to certain items or whatever. So these horses, for example, you have a thousand dollar horse and a twenty five hundred dollar horse. And normally you would assume like, OK, if I get this horse, this horse will be pretty good. And then this one will be better, clearly. Right. But I mean, the difference in between this horse and this horse is so completely dramatic that this horse becomes completely obsolete once you get this one. So you might as well save up and just get this one, honestly, because this this horse not only carries double what this horse can, but it's also twice as fast. So you're, you're kind of wasting your time and your money even getting this horse to begin with. Just save up and get this one. It's a lot better situation for you. Also, I use that same philosophy with the bags, to be perfectly honest. I mean, just save up and get the big bag. Like you could buy this one and then tear up and buy this one and tear up and buy this one, but they don't stack at all. So you basically have to sell one in order to get the next one anyway. Just save up, just save up and get the next one. It, there's no need to waste time with that. Another huge tip in this game is make sure you are paying attention to the calendar. These calendar days actually display uh, different holidays and stuff that come up and they let you know what items are gonna be really important to sell on these days. Uh, the price of said items go up significantly on days like this and you can make a ton of money if you make sure that you plan ahead. So if you know, for example, it's the 12th right now, the 15th is the husbandry fest, we know we're gonna need eggs, Parmesan, brie, hay bale, and carrots. So make sure that you have the licenses necessary to sell those things or you have the means to grow those things in in time for it to be set up here. So, for example, uh, today's the 12th. It says I need I don't know, I guess carrots or hay bales. If I wanted to plant those now, it would be too late. They wouldn't be ready by the time. Well, maybe the carrots would. I think the carrots would be ready, but um, the uh, the hay bale probably not. I don't know about if you could grow hay. <laughs> I'm not really sure how that works or anything, but uh, yeah. So make sure you have enough time to grow that stuff. Make sure you are prepared. And when those days come, I recommend you take any inventory that is not those items, unless you don't have an abundance of them. But if you if you have an abundance of the item that you need, that's going to be really popular. Remove as many other items as you can. So if if tomato cans aren't going to be popular on that day, where you know, don't don't let your tomato cans be sold in here. Go put them in your cellar and put them away until later because you want to make sure that your customers are exclusively buying the things that are popular that day. And if you have a, if your store is like fully stocked and you have like 15 different items to sell plus the popular stuff, then they're going to mix and match and get all kinds of stuff and you're not going to maximize your profits. So even if you have to take things off the shelves and put them away for now for the holiday, just to make sure you focus on the items that are really important, then do that. It's worth the effort. It is actually worth the effort. And then the last tip I'll give you guys is a huge one. This one was massive. And I've been playing this game for a couple weeks now and literally just figured this out because I mean, it's it doesn't seem like something that should be, but it, it, it kind of blew my mind that this is the case. So if you go into the cellar, you have these cellar stands and logic would dictate, OK, these cellar stands are made for the seller to place things on them in order to keep items fresh. And that is the case. You can put fish and eggs and all kinds of stuff on these like so. I have a bunch of eggs here already. Uh, OK, there's no room for that. So let's go ahead and place that there and place that there. And the seller will keep things fresh forever. So as long as it's in the cellar, it will not expire at all, which is kind of interesting that they decided to go that route. I thought it would just take longer, but it just from from what I'm looking at, they don't expire as long as they're in the cellar. But that's not the cool part. That's just like, OK, whatever. Cool. But that that's not the part that's crazy. The part that's crazy is the fact that when you put fish in here, we were lining fish up on the shell, which you can do, but you shouldn't, because as long as the fish are in the cellar, they last forever. They don't have to be on these. You can literally just chuck fish into the corners anywhere in here. It doesn't matter where and they will stay fresh forever. It doesn't matter if they're on the floor or anything like that. Nobody's gonna get upset because they're on the floor. They last forever regardless, as long as they are in this room, which is crazy. And I'm pretty sure that goes for other products too. You could probably just chuck other other things and stuff on the floor if you want. 
I wouldn't recommend it because it'll get really messy or whatever, but because you can put the fish in nice neat piles like this and definitely separate them too. Don't just chuck a bunch of different fish in a pile like this or whatever, like actually separate them. Uh, so that way they're easy to locate, you know exactly what you need and they just, they just stay fresh in here. So on that first day, remember that tip that I gave you to go fishing or whatever? Make sure you unlock the cellar as soon as possible too, because while you're doing that fishing for that first day or that maybe first two days or whatever, you can literally just toss a bunch of fish in here and just keep filling up your store with fish um, and basically just sell that for the first couple days or whatever to make your income. And like I said, you're not paying for seeds and you're not actually buying products. So that's the fish is just pure profit outside of the um outside of you paying for the initial fishing rod but you you catch enough fish to cover that cost in pretty quickly so that's not really a concern at all to be perfectly honest and those are the main tips i want to give you there's probably tons of other things that we could talk about in this game but we'll just end with that for now and as we find out more tips going forward i will let you guys know this game is super chill man it's it's a really nice game it's got a pretty nice gameplay loop it seems like once you get to a certain point though, um, you, you'll probably get to the point to where there's not much really left to do, honestly, but we're still working out, finishing out the farm and getting more greenhouses, upgrading our store fully or whatever. So there's still lots of more work to do. So for now, we're having a blast, but we'll see how the end game looks and we'll talk about that once we get there. But there you go, some tips and tricks for our old market simulator. This game is absolutely great. You should definitely try it out if you like it. And let me know if you have any unique tips that you wanna share down in the comments section below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys on the next one.